Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hi, this is Shankar Ankush. I'm your English teacher, and we are going to do something um, today. Uh, this is a good day, as I think. Uh, many among you have uh, little kids in your home. Am I right? Yes. yes. Many among you have little kids. <coughs> suppose a kid is crying. Uh, suppose, suppose that a kid is crying. It may be like that. The voice of little kid may be like this. Mm. <coughs> Got it? Yes. Uh, a little baby may be crying like this. Mm. Suppose uh, we have different kinds of people uh, walking around the <coughs> street. Suppose a handicapped person is walking. Suppose a handicapped person is walking. The person may be walking like this. Am I right? Yes. The person may be walking like this. Uh, we have different jobs. Uh, young people can do different jobs. Can you tell me please who can join army? Youngsters, okay, like you, you are, uh, you all are young, youngsters, young people, and you can join yeah. army. Uh, old people or uh, adult people cannot join army because uh, there may be difficult wo works to do. There may be difficult works to do. I have a video of uh, uh, you can enjoy it. Just have a look. Who is crying in this video? Old Who is dancing in this video? Old women. Old women. Okay, friends. Today we are going to learn something about old women. Okay, you can write old women. women. In our uh, fourth unit, in our fourth unit, we have a poem written by K. Sachidanandan. We have a poem. You can open your books on page number 30, 74. A poem <coughs> by K. Sachidanandan, Old Women. Uh, many among you. you have grandparents at your home. Uh, some may have a grandfather. Yes. Many, yes. many can have a grandmother. Yes. Uh, or some among you have both of them. Both of them means you have grandfather and grandmother at your home. Yes. Yes. Or some may have none of them. Perhaps some may have none of them. So uh, grandparents who have at your home grandparents they can help you in many ways. They can help you in many ways. And you can also help them in many ways. Okay? So, uh, we have two questions about uh, grandparents. That what are some of the ways in which grandparents care for their grandchildren? Some ways that grandparents may help or take care of their grandchildren. You are all grandchildren. You have grandparents at your home. Okay. How can they help you? How can they help you? They can help you in your study. 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 Okay, right. They can help you in your study. study. Or they can make you some anybody? Your grandmother can help you to make something for your delicious food. Okay, very good. Delicious food. food. And at the same time, you can also help them. You can also help them. In which way? What do you can do for your grandparents? To provide their medicine, 
by taking care of your grandparents. Okay, so uh, let's start with the uh, reading of the poem. The first stanza, who can read you among girls? Yes, okay. Now she can read aloud the poem, the first stanza. Old, old women do not fly on magic bands, nor make obscure prophecies from women and forest. They just sit on vacant park benches in the quiet evenings, call dogs by their names and charm them with grains of mint. Okay, good reading. The next stanza, yes, please read it. Or trembling like waves, they stand in endless queues in government hospitals or settle like sterile clouds in post offices awaiting mail from their sons abroad long ago dead. Very good. Uh, now these students have read the first two standards. We can discuss with the two standards. But first of all, I will again read for you aloud the first two standards. Old women do not fly on magic vans nor make obscure prophecies from ominous forests. They just sit on vacant park benches in the quiet evenings call those by their names and charm them with grains of maize. Or trembling like waves, they stand in endless queues in government hospitals or settle like sterile clouds in post offices awaiting mail from their sons abroad long ago dead. These are the two stanzas that we are discussing with each other. Uh, do you have any problems regarding the uh, difficult words or concerns? Sir. Yes. What is the obscure? What does it mean? Obscure. Okay. Sit down. Uh, you can write obscure. What does it mean obscure? Can anybody tell me? Anybody among you can tell me? What does it mean obscure? <coughs> yes. Not easily understood. It is mean? Not easily understood. Not easily understood. Very good. Sit down. It is mean not easily understood. The one next more word, one. sir. Yes? Uh, ominous is what is meaning? What does it mean? Ominous. Ominous. Okay. Sit down. We have uh, one more uh, word. Ominous. What does it mean, ominous? Anybody among you can tell us what does it mean, ominous? From back benches? Ominous, what does it mean, ominous? Yes. Ominous means threatening. Very good. Sit down. Ominous means threatening. Yeah. So we just discussed about here obscure and ominous. Okay, we shall see line by line what is the meaning of uh, the given stanza. Old women. Now, you know that to whom we can call old women. Do you have your uh, grandparents at your home and one of them is your grandmother. So. I, I don't know that what kind of relation do you have with your grandmother. But it is the uh, situation, means little children and uh, old women or well old people are like each, uh, same. Same in a different manner. Means both are very delicate persons, a little kid and yeah. old, uh, old people are similar in many ways. They are similar in many ways. So we shall see the first answer. Old women do not fly on magic vans. Magic vans. Magic vans. It is the stick. It is the stick. Magic stick. A uh, magician has in a uh, stick in uh, in his hands, right? And with the help of the magic stick, he can perform the different tricks in front of you. Old women do not fly. They cannot fly on a magic van. They don't have a magical stick. With the help of the magical stick, they can fly in the sky. It does not happen. Does it happen? Not at all. Not at all. It does not happen. They don't have such power. 
the old women they are helpless the poem discusses about the isolation and loneliness of the old people particularly about old women they don't fly on magical vans then they nor make obscure prophecies what will happen in the future we don't know can anybody tell what will happen in the future it is not possible so the old women cannot prophesy what will happen in the future obscure prophecies that is way we cannot uh, distinct it clearly that <coughs> what is what will happen in the future that is obscure prophecies from ominous forest actually the ominous forest the word which is uh, given here ominous forest that we discussed here ominous ominous means we discuss uh, it is a threatening forest the jungles the forest which we see which are around us we don't have a courage that we can uh, enter in a jungle or a forest deep forest because there are so many trees there are so many dangerous things maybe in jungle in forest so we don't have a courage to enter in the forest so the forest is called as ominous ominous means threatening threatening forest the old women then what do they do if the old women don't do these two things which are they that is they do not fly on magic vans and they don't make obscure prophecies from the threatening forest the forest is actually not forest but it is the life it may be the life that we cannot concentrate clearly that what kind of life we are living or they have lived are you getting me so if these old women don't do these thing then what do they do so the poet says here they do they just sit on vacant park benches do you have garden in your home uh, sorry in your home city yes yes do you have garden yes, yes. do you visit garden regularly yes. yes okay so you know that gardens are pleasurous things we can you can enjoy there uh, with your friends uh, these old women sit in the garden in the parks on a vacant bench and in the quiet evenings in the quiet evenings the evenings are silent like the old people old people are not mischievous because they have lived their life very peacefully there are so many ups and downs in their lives are you getting me there are so many ups and downs in their lives so they become silent at the let, uh, uh, at the end of their lives so the evenings are silent the old women are seated on the benches in the uh, in the gardens and what do they do they call those by their names there are dogs around them they call them they attract they try to attract the dogs towards them how by charm them with grains of maize and by charming them with grains of maize by offering grains offering grains uh, the scene you might have uh, watched in so many uh, movies when we want to call the doze when we attract when we try to attract the doze are uh, about near us we offer them grains some grains uh, grains of uh, maize grains of jowar wow. grains of uh, wheat the grains of bajri maybe maybe you can offer them many grains and the doze can attract to so the in the first stanza we have uh, discussed with the situation that old women do not do these two things and they can do one thing that they can sit in the vacant uh, on the vacant benches in the park and they can 
uh, call the doors near to them. So this is happening in the first answer. Okay. 